Welcome to London. In the next 48 hours, we go on a food adventure and explore this bustling city by foot. From shopping to peaceful nature walks, this video has got it all. Stay tuned to get ideas on what to eat and do in London. And remember to hit that like button and let's get this journey started. Hello darlings! Greetings from London! We're super excited to be here. It's very noisy in here because we're at the Paddington Station. We're trying a variety of food today, so let's start off with a light breakfast. We arrive to one of the oldest markets in London, the Leiden Hall Market. Strolling down the cobbled path, savor the Victorian architecture and the glass-covered roof. The first bite this morning takes us to Au Merveilleux du Fred. While meringue cakes are their flagship item, other pastries await. Sandwiches too. Mamio got the plain brioche. The top feels waxy. This one is just like a dinner roll. I like it. Next up, the almond croissant with rum in it. We got that crispy exterior. Oh, well, inside, they put some sort of filling. Crunchy. I feel a little bit rum in paste. The paste part is the best part. Heads up, the public areas of the Leiden Hall Market are open 24-7. However, the shops and restaurants are open at different times. For those in search of a food paradise, walk 15 minutes south to the Borough Market. You'll cross the London Bridge from where you can soak in the views of the Tower Bridge in the distance. Once you see the Southern Cathedral, you're near the Borough Market. There are so many tasty things to eat here. You can go street food style with dosa, dive into a bowl of handmade pasta, and ah, the sausage rolls. You can also wine and dine indoors. There are also shops selling fresh produce and seafood. It's no wonder this market attracts both locals and tourists. It can get ultra busy on Saturdays though, so visiting on a weekday during off-peak hours is recommended. For more details on what to eat at the Borough Market, be sure to watch our previous video. I put the link in the description box. And then, we go on a digestive stroll and soak in the views along the Thames River. There are quite a number of bridges, each with its own unique design. We stop by Tate Modern to enjoy some art. It's free admission, though for certain exhibitions, booking tickets is advised. The sun has set and appetites rise. For dinner, we head back to Paddington, where our hotel is. From there, a few minutes walk towards the Little Venice District brings us to the Grand Duchess. Yes, we're dining on a boat. They serve some of the freshest fish available in London, majority of which comes from Kurno Sashimi and Wild Harbor. Here we have the angel hair fries, very thin. It takes a bit of patience to eat these fries. Well, they call them chips in England. It is so crispy. Here we have a quintessential English drink, gin and tonic. It's filled to the top. That's pretty smooth. It's a little fruity. This is the best gin tonic I ever had. It's so smooth. This is all mine. <laughs> that's the gin that's in this cocktail. Up next, the fish platter with smoked salmon, pickled herring, peppered trout, shrimp, pickles, soda bread, and butter. There's also an option to add on a sake pairing. Mmm, that fish is good, that trout. I'll have a so. Definitely peppery, you get the sensation on your tongue. Loved how the pickled veggies are rolled into the pickled herring. That herring is so smooth. It's like butter. A whole place with seaweed, cider, and over a dozen mussels. Oh, the fish is so smooth, it almost camouflages with the seaweed. Because the seaweed is very smooth. The flavor is kind of like french fries or chips. We're in England. <laughs> For dessert, we try the apple galette with creme fraiche. On top of the cream, there's those pieces of almond that tastes like a Christmas dessert. Mm, also could be eaten for Thanksgiving. Mm, the other side tastes different. The first bite, the one with a lot of apple slices, that side tasted more sleepy. This other side tastes more lemony, more bright. It's a two-faced dessert that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde approve. 
We have about 24 hours left in London. Breakfast takes us to the edge of Covent Garden, a neighborhood that's known for its markets, entertainment, and fashion. We step through an illuminated portal that leads to a small, colorful alley. In the 70s and 80s, Neil's yard was home to Monty Python, the British comedy troupe. Today, there are health and beauty shops, as well as food options. So I bought this because it looks kind of like a flower. Two yes. Americanos. Starting off the day with a filling meal of Turkish fried eggs. Two eggs sit on labne, which is strained yogurt, also topped with apricot harissa, chickpeas, and herbs. It's so good. There's a little tartness to it. Mamio ordered a porridge, the one with poached quince and pumpkin seed granola. Both dishes are vegetarian. Flowery oatmeal or fruity oatmeal, so good. With our bodies all fueled up, let's go on a long walk. After all, one of the best ways to get to know a city is by foot. This slower pace will allow us to pause and observe. Also, let us wander into shops. I'm thrilled to show you this stationary shop. It's a place I've been waiting years to visit. From notebooks to cards, Ooh, so much beautiful paper, I tell you. Been looking for a wax seal stamp with a B on it, and here it is. It'll be a useful souvenir. Wow, a bunch of these are food stalls. It smells so good. I'm seeing Mediterranean food, Greek food. During our walk, we also pass through Carnaby Street, which is home to independent fashion boutiques as well as international brands. And there are many pubs, cafes, and restaurants within walking distance. I wish I gathered more footage of Regent Street because the architecture is gorgeous. Built in 1819, Regent Street is one of London's most popular shopping streets and is described to have world-class flagship stores and award-winning restaurants. During the holiday season, look up for the illuminated decorations. Regent Street intersects with Oxford Street. Spanning a little over a mile, Oxford Street is said to be Europe's busiest shopping street. Some sources say about a half a million people pass through Oxford Street every day. We swing by Selfridges, an upscale department store with multiple locations. Selfridges on Oxford Street is the iconic flagship store, opened in 1909 by Harry Gordon Selfridge. It's a luxury shopping experience, and we find fun designs, like this handbag that looks like a button-up shirt. A gentle monster, when you go to their bigger stores, it feels like an art museum, like a little gallery, because they set up really cool sculptures that they make. This one uh, is a smaller one. Wow, that must have taken quite a bit of time putting all those bulbs on there. A little warning, there's a lot of temptations in that store. Come with a big budget if you're <laughs> gonna shop. We leave one temptation for another temptation. Down Baker Street from the Sherlock Holmes Museum is Marylebone Village, where you can enjoy a modern spin of Indian coastal cuisine. We dive into their four-course lunch menu called Taste of Trishna. Vegetarian dishes are available. Let's begin with freshly churned lassi. This one's got Alfonso mango. Comes with three different kinds of chutneys. You have the shrimps and tomato. You have the mint and coriander spicy and your sweet mango. The condiments come with a variety of papadum. Looks like styrofoam. Course one brings upon us alu chat. It's a popular North Indian street food made of potato and masala chickpea. It sounds quite sweet, and then the spicy gradually increases. It's a crescendo of spice. Here we have Nandu Varaval, a deep fried soft shell crab with tomato chutney. So very crunchy and oily and delicious. Also salty and savory, as expected. So ladies, what do you have here? So dark chutney seek with pineapple chutney, shahi salmon tikka with raw papaya and some Thank you. This almost looks like kimchi. <laughs> I love the plating as well. 
It's amazing. It's my mom. That salmon though, I'm gonna be dreaming about that one for a while. One of a kind salmon. Oh, it looks like a painting, like a flower, abstract flower. It's like a beef jerky but softer and thicker and spicy as well. <laughs> I got the mango lassi for a reason because it's spicy. The third course has many components. So what you have here is your cashew and pepper chicken, gungura lamb with the red sorum, lentils made from five different pulses. On top you have is chili, not cherry. Chetinaru orleiros is your baby potato, spice them with chetinaru spices, rice and your bread basket. Thank you. Pleasure. Everything is tasty. The gongure lamb is sweeter than the cashew pepper chicken. Most of these items are spicy. It's basically having 50 shades of spicy. It looks like a meatball, but it's a baby potato. Remember to enjoy these dishes with none. Tastes good even alone though. These two are my favorite. Um, this is awesome, by the way. <laughs> oh my God, it tastes even better. That's your fig and cardamom kheer. Kheer is an aromatic rice pudding with pistachio kulfi. This one is your gulabi badami kulfi. Gulabi means made from rose petals. Badami means almond. Kulfi means an Indian salad rice cream. Awesome, thank you. A little perfume. The flaky strips remind me of shredded dried squid. These are actually almond patissa. It's like cotton candy. It just melts right away. Onto the fig and cardamom kheer. That one has a lot of crunchiness because of the almonds. In comparison to the first dessert, it's more mild. It reminds me of um, like a tapioca pudding. The white part, that is rice. At the end of the meal, a wooden box arrives. That's a little penny fork. That's your coconut and rose barfi. Barfi basically stands for sweets in India. White chocolate truffle when you bite and you have dark chocolate. There's so much going on in there. The flavor reminds me of um, like the incense. The rose flavored coconut barfi tasted quite milky. It was not forecasted to rain at this time, and we're not complaining because we love rain. Away from the city's hustle and bustle is Regent's Park. Spanning around 400 acres, Regent's Park is one of London's eight royal parks. It was once a part of King Henry VIII's hunting forest, which eventually opened to the public by 1841. Today, the park has formal gardens, playgrounds, and sports facilities. It also has a large wetland area and is home to around 100 species of birds. As darkness blankets the sky, we take a ride through Hyde Park. Tonight, we shall dine by the River Thames. Ooh, Christmas decorations! We are 15 minutes early to the restaurant, so we can just walk around a bit. So many autumn leaves, and there's a bridge over there. This is the Albert Bridge, and it leads to the Battersea Park. The decorative openings on the side look like snowflakes. The restaurant is now open. The walls are lined with tufted seats, while tapered candles await at each table. We are seated at a cozy corner. I'm loving the textured mirror behind Mommy O. It looks very simple, but the flavor is way more complex. It's a bit of a, like a Parmesan cheese flavor. The edges of that is crispy, but the inside is soft. The Paloma mocktail is sweet and a little tart because of the grapefruit. As for appetizers, Mamio gets the baby gem lettuce salad. I also want some veggies. Thus, Padron peppers. Tastes very toasty and inside very warm pockets of heat. Overall, the peppers are mild. It's like a gentle carcinogenic flavor. That's the Chardonnay sauce? Yes. Ooh, you are painting this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So soft. Once again, the server paints with sauce. The movements remind me of acrylic pour. All right, so this is venison loin and pastilla. I got this as a medium rare. It is so soft. 
It's so soft, I feel like I'm biting into noodles. Not al dente noodles, but like noodles that got soft. Let's try the pickled blackberry. I'm really glad we came here. We are given a pre-dessert. This is apple crumble. Cheers! Temperature-wise, it's warm. You definitely feel the apple in that. And the hard, crunchy stuff that feels like granola. To enjoy the maple roasted pumpkin souffle, cut an opening at the top. Then place the cinnamon spiced ice cream over it. That's not all. There's also toffee sauce. Mm. 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 Enjoy. Wow, it looks so good. Cool. <laughs> the texture is like like a sundubu. Maybe even smoother than sundubu. Mm -hmm. The deeper you get, it's quite hot. The best souffle I ever had. Complimentary chocolate truffles arrive. It's very powdery. <laughs> it melted from my hand. Oh, so smooth, but not as smooth as a souffle. Souffle is another level of silky smooth. It is a chocolate truffle, so expectedly decadent. Five minutes to ten. Doesn't this look kind of like a croissant? Tomorrow is our last day in London. Sad about that, but excited to go to Paris. Before checking out of the hotel, let's take a short stroll at Norfolk Square Garden. So our hotel is just right there, like a couple few seconds walk. And there's a bunch of hotels surrounding this park. Piles of leaves. A few days in London is not enough. I feel like even if I lived here, I'd never run out of things to do. After all, such a city is always moving, always changing. Hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas on what to do in London. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Toodles, my noodles. We arrived yesterday, uh, slept a lot, and now we're here. It's very noisy in here because we're at the Paddington Station. At ground level are the long-distance high-speed trains with ticket machines nearby. To travel within London, go underground for the metro, which is referred to as the tube. We just learned that you don't need to buy a train ticket, you could just swipe your bank card. So I use my visa. Alright, so they have two different prices. They have a takeaway price and an eat-in price. Alright, this is a huge chandelier inside and the gentleman working here his head almost touches those crystals. Oh, merveilleux du frère. And she's wearing the dress that pops out in the back, the booty. I got an espresso. Not too acidic, right? Not much. And Mamio, you got? Americano. Much stronger than one in USA. Okay, the tail, that's more like a harder crunch. And then when you get to the middle part, it's a softer crispiness. When we filmed this video, it was November. Thus, the holiday decor and Christmassy items. We got some Christmas elves for Mommy O. <laughs> Mommy O's gonna put her new friends in her pocket. <laughs> They're saying hi. hi. They're cuddling in there. Oh, so warm. How's your friends? Are they warm too? Yeah. Still cuddling. <laughs> so there's these little alleyways as I walk by, and ooh, I wanna go down there. But we gotta stay on track, we gotta stay focused on the market. When I make these filming itineraries, I go through multiple drafts. Uh, this was part of the one we're gonna eat at. However, we really wanna save our stomach for eating at Boro Market because there's so much there. The thing about travel, whoa, look at this! Italian restaurant that goes downstairs. Mailbox. For a tour of the hotel we stayed at, watch our previous video. I put that link in the description box. Oh, the metal and the wood on this, the railing, it's only 200 years old. 
Dinner tonight is walking distance from the hotel. If you're wondering how I found out about this restaurant, it was just doing research on what restaurants are nearby the hotel, near-ish or walking distance. And then I looked at the menu and I was like, oh, this place sounds good. There are stairs that go on the rooftop. I'm guessing during the summer, they set out tables and chairs there as well. Wow, this phone booth is decorated in Christmas from head to toe. Oh, is this supposed to be like a double decker? Oh, there's a way to go inside. <laughs> That's cool. The Millennium Bridge is for pedestrians. If you walk straight north, you'll eventually arrive at St. Paul's Cathedral. Check out their selection of decorative mushrooms. The whole extended family is here. Hello! <laughs> we just met up with the viewer here. <laughs> she said hello. hello. So, and she offered to get us tangerines. Yeah. It's cold. Oh, you need. You need some. It's too cold. Tangerines. Thank you so much. <laughs> so kind of you. <laughs> Follow connoisseur. Card. Oh, that's clever. Thank aren't you? you? Clever. Creative writing degree. <laughs> This restaurant is called Jikoni. Love the chairs outside. These are the types of birds you could see here. So far we've seen a lot of black-headed gulls. The mandarin duck looks so fabulous. Okay, I got confirmation. This egg roll looking thing, that is the pastilla. And the thing that camouflaged with the uh, meat, that is truffle and artichoke boulangere with wild sepe puree. When I cut into it, it shows a lot of slices of those onion. Mommy was trying to slice. Mommy O gave me some of her halibut. Mm, that is good. Mm. Can I just say, the bathroom is really nice. The wallpaper, it must be um, Venice. Check out how short this door is. Got a limbo. <laughs> it's a storage for food. In my free time, I like to do arts and crafts. Lately, I've been working on bigger canvases. For more artful updates, Follow me on Instagram at Creative Chillout. Dance party!